The source of Sanji's Diable Jambe has been one of the biggest One Piece mysteries ever since its debut in Innie's lobby. Till this day, we don't exactly know how he's able to conjure flames from seemingly nowhere. But I believe I just cracked the code. See, it all goes back to science. Science is of course the source of the rest of Sanji's powers, such as his exoskeleton, his regeneration, and his invisibility. Although we know that Germa's science couldn't possibly explain his fire since he awakened it before his raid suit unlocked his powers. So what science am I referring to? See, it's not Judge's science I am referring to. We must remember that Judge specifies in a particular type of science, biochemical science. But there are other form of sciences. In fact, there is a form of science that is the evolution of all sciences that I believe is the basis of Sanji's Diable Jambe. The science of cooking. What? Yes, I know it sounds ridiculous that I'm calling cooking a science but it will make sense when I mention its more formal scientific name, alchemy. Yes, alchemy. The same alchemy from Full Metal Alchemist with the transmutation circles and magical properties. Trust me, this is not just a fictional power. Alchemy is actually a form of science and that science goes back to medieval times. In those times, alchemy was defined as the predecessor of chemistry and it was supposedly based on the transformation of matter. Most notably, it was known for people practicing it to convert base metals into gold or to find the elixir of eternal life. So what does this have to do with cooking in Sanji? Well, alchemy is the science of transformation, creation, or combination. In its most rudimentary usage, the practice of alchemy is fundamentally what we do in cooking. We transform raw ingredients to make a new creation. To cook, you must understand all forms of science and combine them into what can be described as alchemy. You must understand chemistry and chemical reactions to know how different ingredients react to one another, especially under fire. You must also know biology on a deep level to understand the anatomy of the animals you are using. You must also know botany for the plants you are using as well. You must also understand physics when it comes to cooking with fire. Things like heat transfer, such as conduction, convection, and radiation are all principles of physics you use in cooking. Essentially, to be a master cook, you have to be a master scientist, at least in the alchemical arts. But don't just take it from me. There's a wonderful article that outlines the connection between alchemy and cooking. It actually puts it in a quite poetic way. So let me read a small expert to you guys. Cooking as a sacred alchemy. The sacred and alchemical character of cooking is woven into the very fabric of humanity's principal wisdom, philosophical and religious traditions. Cooking for Aristotle in the Western alchemical tradition, which followed him, was a metaphor for the whole cosmo-historical evolutionary process. The heavenly bodies drawn through the sky by their love for the unmoved mover pass over the face of the earth and imparted their distinctive qualities to prime matter. The sun and moon played the principal role, providing heat and moisture, or by their absence, cooling and drying. But the other planets contributed nuances as well, the herbs and spices, as it were, of the cosmic stew. Alchemists could nurture these same processes in the laboratory, helping prime matter along its quest for perfection. Medicine which sought to balance the bodily humors and ultimately the basic qualities of hot and cold, wet and dry, was itself a sort of alchemy, and cooking was its principal moment. The link will be in the description to learn more, but what I'm trying to point out here is that Sanji through cooking has always been an alchemist. This is the form of science Oda has always intended for Sanji to master. That's why I have a theory that Sanji's Diable Jambe is the result of a power system yet to be formally introduced in the story, alchemy. Stick with me throughout this whole video, and I'll not only show you how far Sanji can take this power, but I'll also explain why alchemy is the key to defeating the Gorosei. But before I begin, make sure to support your boy by subscribing and turning on that bell notification. I will be making more consistent uploads of amazing theories, so be sure not to miss out on your weekly dose of middleweight theories. Okay, let's begin. 
Let's start with a fun fact. Did you know that Sanji has already shown us the alchemy of cooking through his new Kama Kimpo recipes? That's right. In Punk Hazard, he made a hormone soup that revitalized the Straw Hat's worn out bodies. Through his cooking, he was able to literally manipulate the chemistry in the Straw Hat bodies to enhance their healing process, something that he learned in his time with Ivankov in Kamabaka Kingdom. This is the alchemy of cooking. But how far can this go? Can Sanji's cooking alchemy explain the mysterious Diable Jambe? Well, we do know that Sanji's resistance to fire is due to his cooking. In chapter 55, we get a very interesting scene where Pearl is burning everyone but somehow Sanji is completely unaffected. He showed no fear fighting Pearl's flames to everyone's surprise. And when asked why he is so fearless of fire, Sanji proclaimed that you can't be a cook if you're afraid of fire. This I believe is an intentional connection between his cooking, alchemy, and his ability to control fire. But the question still remains, is alchemy an actual power system in the One Piece world? The answer is a surprisingly yes. We've actually been introduced to alchemy through an in-game villain, Saint J. Garcia Saturn. Okay, so why Saturn? Why is it through him we understand that alchemy is an actual power system in the One Piece verse? Well, Saturn is confirmed to be a scientist. But have you ever wondered what form of science he actually practices? We actually get a huge clue in chapter 1103, where Saturn explained that he was the one who gave Bonnie that power. As Bonnie tried to punch Saturn using Nika's borrowed ability, Saturn begins to lecture her after she fails. He says, you owe that power of yours to me. We conducted experiments to determine whether extract fusions can grant babies an ability without feeding them that fruit normally. Through this dialogue, we can understand that Saturn specializes in chemistry, since he's using extractions of their fruits to change the methods of how we can give people fruit powers. It's also important to note that Saturn uses human experimentation, something very common in unethical, chemical, and alchemical experimentation. But I don't believe it's simple chemistry that Saturn practices. Rather, his specialty is alchemy. It may also be important to note here that in real life, it is said that alchemy is just an unevolved form of chemistry. But I believe this is a misinterpretation of the true value of alchemy. Modern scientists consider the medieval practices of alchemy as too magical in nature to consider it real science. So they believe out of the superstition of alchemy, the true science of chemistry was born. This I believe is a fallacy. These fallacies come from the common misconception of how people view evolutionary progress. We often believe that everything new is an evolution of something that came before it, while in actuality, evolution is not chronological in nature. Things can actually devolve and become less sophisticated. I doubt anyone thinks that the chicken is an evolution of the dinosaur, for example. Take the world of One Piece for another example. We've recently learned that Egghead, the island of the future, isn't new technology at all. Rather, it's technology that is centuries old. See, even ideas and practices can devolve, especially when knowledge is not passed down or lost in history, which makes all the more sense when you consider the void century is a time where many great ideas and practices may have been lost. This is what I believe is the case for alchemy. It's not that it's chemistry in its raw form. It's more so that chemistry is but a branch of alchemy whose true practice and value has been lost through time. Although of course I can't prove this hypothesis in our real world, I believe Oda conceptualizes alchemy in the way I presented. In the One Piece world, alchemy may be the magical science that has been lost through time. And who better to have access to forbidden and ancient science than the warrior god of science, Saturn. But have we seen Saturn actually practice alchemy in the story? Well, yes again. He actually uses it in his fighting debut. Alchemy is what I believe is the source of Saturn's transmutation circle we see him come out of, especially since it looks very similar to the ones used in Full Metal Alchemist. He actually uses this ability again in the most recent chapter. As he begins to summon the Gorosei, we see multiple circles in the ground with dark energy emanating from them. From this observation, I believe we have every reason to consider that this is indeed a transmutation circle 
and that is indeed alchemy. But with all this being said, how can we relate this to Sanji and his Diable Jabe? Well, there are many connections we can make between Sanji and Saturn that help me arrive at this conclusion. Have you noticed that Oda has been setting up multiple parallels between Sanji and Saturn? Starting from the reveal of Saturn's demonic form, even before Saturn appeared. Sanji was the first one to notice the alchemical circle Saturn was coming out of. At first, I thought nothing of this until Oda continues to make Sanji's reactions relevant every time Saturn uses a new power. He does this again in chapter 1108 when Saturn enters his giant form. In this chapter, we get a very interesting panel of Sanji standing right in front of Saturn as if he is preparing to fight him. But what's the most interesting thing here is Sanji's comments as he analyzes Saturn's abilities. Look at what he says here. Look, he's given up any pretense of looking human. I've seen many people point out that this moment has a double meaning. While Sanji is commenting on Saturn's losing his humanity, he may also be thinking about his own fear of losing himself to his germa genes. The connection between Saturn and Sanji's innate demonic nature, I believe, is an intentional connectivity between alchemy and the practice of summoning demons. But more on that later, let's continue to analyze Sanji's words. There is a strange look in his eye. Seems like he's completely coated in venom too. Look more into the first thing Sanji says. There's a strange look in his eye. This quote makes me think back to chapter 1077, where Saji also had a strange look in his eye. In this chapter, he almost looked demonic as he's talking to S Shark about executing him. This is the first time we've actually seen Saji look like he's enjoying fighting, something that's usually not part of his character. This gives more clues to Saji's innate demonic nature, more connections between Saji and Saturn. He also comments on Saturn's usage of Venom and was able to discern that it was dangerous and immediately told Luffy to dodge. Although Luffy ends up being the one that fights Saturn, I just can't help but think Oda keeps making it seem like Sanji has this strange affinity towards understanding Saturn's true nature and powers. Even in chapter 1109, as Saturn begins to summon what seems like the Gorosei, Somehow, Oda makes sure to show us that Sanji once again reacts to Saturn's alchemy. This cannot be a coincidence, especially since Oda chooses to end the chapter on Sanji's reaction for some strange reason. Well, I may have figured out why Oda continues to make Sanji relevant every time Saturn uses his abilities. It's because their source of power is the same. Sanji also has the innate ability to use a similar form of alchemy that Saturn uses. But what's the common denominator here between Saturn and Sanji's abilities? It's fire. Have you noticed that every time Saturn uses his abilities, fire is always around? Starting all the way back to the God Valley flashback where we see Saturn talking to Kuma. If you look closely next to Saturn, we can clearly see fire all around him, along with sparks of hockey. This is not an isolated occurrence either, because when Saturn first used the alchemical circle to summon his demonic form, what do we see? More fire, a massive fire that even appears to look like black flames. A random marine even mentioned this as he says, what was that explosion? But here's something you may have missed. Saturn's demonic form is actually always on fire. From the very same chapter, we get a perspective of Saturn's back and what seems to be just a tattoo pattern is actually fire. It was hard to notice before, but we get an even better perspective in chapter 1108. As Sanji is standing right in front of Saturn, if you look at the top of Saturn's back, it is clearly spewing flames. Mind you, I am not referring to his black clouds, rather the fire above that looks more distinctly like traditional fire. Fire is what I believe is the cornerstone of how Saturn uses alchemy, and this I believe is the same case for Sanji's Diable Jambe. But before I go into that, I can drive this point home in chapter 1109. In that chapter, Saturn uses a transmutation circle to begin to summon the rest of the Gorosei. And lo and behold, what do we see around every transmutation circle? Fire. Lots of fire. But why fire? 
How does fire connect to alchemy and how does this explain both Saturn and Sanji's abilities? In alchemy, fire is associated with transformation, purification, and spirituality. Fire is the cornerstone of alchemy itself, especially since alchemy is primarily concerned with transforming matter to different states, which is the specialty of fire. Through fire, you can turn a slab of unrefined metal into a sword. Through fire, you can turn raw ingredients into a meal. Fire is not only used to create, but it can also deconstruct matter. Through fire, you can burn down material and turn it into dust. Through fire, you can turn sand into glass. Fire is representative of creation and destruction itself, which is essential to the magic of alchemy. That's why all of Saturn's alchemical abilities start with fire. So the same concept applies to Sanji's Diable Jambe. Diable Jambe, I believe, is a form of alchemy similar to Levi's Fire Alchemy in Full Metal Alchemist. But how can Sanji harness this power without even knowing this? Well, it all goes back to cooking. Remember how I pointed out that cooking is actually a form of alchemy? Cooking also uses fire to transform and manipulate matter. Although Sanji is completely unaware of what he's doing, he's actually harnessing the power of alchemy through learning the principles of cooking, since the first principle of alchemy is to understand fire on a deep level. The connection between fire and alchemy gets even deeper. You see, in alchemy, fire also represents emotions such as passion, love, anger, and even hate. Remember what Sanji always says when someone asks him about his Diable Jambe. He says that he can light himself on fire because his passions burn stronger than any normal fire. Sanji's Diable Jambe is connected with his emotions because emotions are necessary to conjure fire in alchemy. That's why Oda chooses to connect Sanji's fire with passion because the source of the science of alchemy is fire and emotions. This gives a whole new meaning to when Sanji mentions the power of love. It's very likely that this is Oda's code name for alchemy. The idea is even more interesting when we consider Kizuru's reaction to Sanji destroying his laser. He says that if Sanji's power of love can destroy light, then they will have to throw away physics books, implying that Sanji's explanation for what he did makes no sense and defies the traditional laws of physics, which is exactly what alchemy aims to do, defy the natural laws of our world. To transform things into what we otherwise couldn't do with traditional science. It's also important to note here that Sanji didn't simply block or deflect the laser beam. According to Sandman, a popular One Piece translator, the Japanese sound effect used when Sanji disables Kizaru's laser is something like the sound of a tire or balloon bursting. So he actually completely disables the laser beam, which is an even more physics-defying feat. This is a sign that Sanji can use alchemy to manipulate light. We've actually seen Sanji manipulate light already in Fishman Island. In chapter 635, Sanji uses an attack called Pool of Free Spectre. Although it's unclear in the manga, the anime makes it obvious that this attack is not his usual red fire Diable Jambe. This attack is actually using light on different spectrums, hence the name Spectra which is the French word for spectrum, as in spectrum of light. This may be the reason why Sanji was able to counter Hizuru's light, because he himself can manipulate light using alchemy. Sanji this whole time has been using his own special form of science, isn't that so ironic? Even as he rejects the science of his family, he creates an even greater form of science that transcends judges science. How poetic. Speaking of Sanji's family, I want to explore a very interesting idea on where exactly Sanji got his natural talent for alchemy, because it's not so simple as I explain it to be. Not just every master chef in the world who has passions can conjure flames through alchemy and manipulate light. It's specifically Sanji that I believe holds the bloodline of strong ancient alchemy users. But who in Sanji's family was able to use alchemy if not his unsufferable father? Well, we may find the answer further up his bloodline to his early Vinsmoke ancestors. 
In chapter 832, it was revealed that Vinsmo Kingdom conquered the whole North Blue on their military might. Think about it. They conquered a whole sea. How is that even possible without some form of special power? That special power, I believe, is alchemy. As we know, the Vinsmoked are a scientific kingdom. It's likely that they were able to harness alchemy, which is the pinnacle of science. Now stick with me here because this is about to get really deep. Remember how I said alchemy was a lost scientific practice that only the Gorosades would have access to? Well, what if one of the Gorosei is a Vinsmoke that harnessed alchemy long, long ago? The idea does seem far-fetched, but with the help of this amazing thread by Danny on Twitter, I believe we may have our answer. Link in the description below to Danny's thread, but I will summarize his findings quickly. Danny's theory is that the blonde Gorosei, Saint Jupiter, is actually the Vinsmoke King who conquered the North Blue long ago. See, Oda always intended for Sanji to be connected to a celestial dragon, or even higher than that, a Gorosei. If we take a look at some of the early sketches of Sanji's father, in Oda's notes, he intended to make Judge a celestial dragon. His name was actually supposed to be Saint Germain. From his design, he looked like a celestial dragon who can fight, and the only ones we know that can do that are the Holy Knights and the Gorosei, especially if we look at the surname Saint Germain. It sounds so similar to all the other Gorosei's names which also start with Saint. Although this idea was scrapped by Oda, I don't believe it's far from the plot line that he ended up choosing. It's likely that instead of Judge being a Gorosei, Oda chose for a Vinsmoke ancestor to be the Gorosei, Saint Jupiter. Especially if you consider that Jupiter looked like the youngest Gorosei. This is relevant because the Vinsmokes conquered the North Blue 300 years ago, and upon conquering a whole sea, he may have been invited to become a Gorosei. That's why he looks younger than all of the Gorosei, because he may have been one for a much shorter time. So okay, the only thing I disagree with Danny's theory is that he also proposes that all of the Gorosei at some point got the ageless surgery performed on them by the Opi Opi no Mi. This I know is a popular idea, but I actually don't believe this is the case because of the difference in appearance of St. Jupiter and the rest of the Gorosei. Just think about it, if all of them had the age of surgery, they would all look around the same age. They would look like they are in their primes, much like Jupiter. I don't believe it was the Opi Opi no Mi, because we learned that certain devil fruits have the will to avoid the world government, such as the Gomu Gomu no Mi. It's likely that the same applied to the Opi no Mi. We must also consider that if the Gorosei had access to the Opi Opi no Mi, they would never let it go. They would continue to use it every time. Especially when you realize that Blackbeard knows how to steal their fruits from a user's body before it even starts the rebirth process. Most likely, this method is already well known by the Gorosei, so it's not likely that they used the Opi Opi no Mi, it's more likely that it's been evading them. So if not the ageless surgery, why do they look the same age in almost every flashback? Well, I hypothesize that the Gorosei stay young using alchemy. Creating the elixir of life is one of the principal reasons behind alchemy's existence after all, so it's more likely that this is what they done to keep themselves young. But I believe the process isn't as perfected as the ageless surgery. They may have performed alchemical rituals to slow down the aging process, but it may not make them ageless. That's why some of the Gorosei look like they are much older than the new Gorosei who looked like he just joined. The older Gorosei are maybe around 800 or 900 years old, while the Vinsmo Gorosei may be around 300 to 500 years old if we align that to when Germa conquered the North Blue using alchemy. Look at it this way, the alchemical ritual they used slowed down the aging process, so that 10 years is like a century to them. So if the Gorosei are around 800 years old, they look like 80 while the younger Gorosei may be 400 years old, which is why he looks like 40. They are not ageless, they are just aging much, much, much slower than the average person. I even have an interesting hypothesis for what sort of alchemical ritual they use to stay young. It's most likely a sacrificial alchemical ritual where they trade people's life force to fuel their own. This is what I believe is the true purpose to God Valley. It's not simply that they are hunting for their own pleasure, 
God Valley may actually be the groundwork for an alchemical ritual where the Gorosei use the life force of the island citizens they kill to make elixirs of life that they could drink periodically. That's why they have the hunting games periodically. This idea is even more credible once you consider Saturn's involvement in the God Valley incident. Saturn's presence must always be needed there so he can perform the ritual to feed himself and the other Gorosei. Crazy, right? All this may make your head spin, but there's actually a detail that ties this all together. Remember how I said that Sanji's father was supposed to be called Saint Germain? Well, there is a real life character whose name was Saint Germain. In real life, the Count of Saint Germain was an adventurer who achieved prominence in European society in the mid 18th century due to his interest and achievement in science, alchemy, philosophy, and the arts. It's also interesting to note that Saint Germain is a very French sounding name, and it so happens that French is Sanji's nationality. So Sanji's father was supposed to be named after a real life Frenchman who was known for being a great alchemist. This is not at all a coincidence. It gets even deeper guys. Another very interesting rumor on Saint Germain is that he made far-fetched claims of being 500 years old. What a coincidence that Jupiter may be around the same age in the One Piece world. Saint Germain may have also been a real life Gorose. So instead of making Saint Germain Sanji's father, Oda may have went the route of making him his distant ancestor, the Gorosei Saint Jupiter. This also explains how Judge was allowed to change Sanji's bounty to only alive. This is an authority that is likely only reserved for high ranking celestial dragons. It may also be the reason why the Vincemoth can still attend the reverie despite not having land of their own. They simply have the special privilege of coming from a lineage of a Gorosei. So what does this mean for Sanji and his future powers? Well something very interesting that I noticed with Sanji recently is that he has yet to use Ifri Jambe throughout the whole arc. He even has yet to use Diable Jambe while he's in front of Saturn and Kisru. For a while I was confused as to why Oda would make this choice, but now I believe it's clear. Oda is waiting for Sanji to use his powers in front of someone who understands alchemy. At first I thought he would do this in front of Saturn, but now that Saturn seems to be summoning the rest of the Gorosei, that presents a very interesting possibility. The possibility that Saint Jupiter himself will arrive and Sanji may have an encounter with him. It's very interesting that the latest chapter ended with Sanji's reaction to Saturn's summoning. To me, this is a sign that Sanji will be relevant in the next chapter and he may even run to go help Luffy after he realizes that he cannot handle so many opponents on his own. I can imagine a moment where Sanji goes to help Luffy using Ifri Jambe and his attack is countered by none other than Saint Jupiter Finsmokes. Perhaps Saint Jupiter will notice Sanji's fire and immediately recognize that he is using alchemy and Sanji is part of his direct bloodline. This would be absolutely peak and we would get more insight on what's the next stage of alchemy usage Sanji can harness. We all know he is destined to have black flames, so that may be a given, but I wonder if Sanji at some point may even be able to perform his own alchemical rituals or even teleport like we see the Gorosei do using the circles. The possibilities are endless. But there's an even more interesting and crazy conclusion to this theory that may happen in the next chapter. In the latest chapter, Luffy continuously points out that Saturn keeps regenerating even after everything that Luffy's done. This is actually something Sanji noticed even before Luffy in chapter 1104. I believe this is actually due to Saturn's alchemy. It may not simply be that he is healing on his own, rather he may be using the life force of the people he sacrificed during God Valley to regenerate his body. Sort of what like Hawkins does with his voodoo dolls. Now why is this important? Well, the only way to counter alchemy may be with more alchemy. This is where Sanji's next power up comes to mind. Sanji may actually be able to use his flames to counter Saturn's healing process. But to do this he may need an evolution of the flames he currently has. He will need black flames. Sanji's black flames may work like how the Uchiha Amaterasu works in Naruto. It may be an eternal flame that won't go out no matter what, even if you can heal. The flame will just keep burning until nothing is left. 
Sanji's Black Flames may be the perfect counter to Saturn's healing factor that helps Luffy eventually defeat Saturn. Upon unlocking those Black Flames, Sanji will live up to his epithet, Black Leg Sanji. He will also be considered a genius in alchemy since alchemy is primarily concerned with creating something that lasts forever, just like an eternal flame. Okay, the theory is mostly complete, but I'd like to add one more possibility we may see Sanji's use of alchemy be of importance. In the latest chapter, it seems like Saturn is about to summon the Gorosei, but has anyone ever thought that the summoning can be interrupted? Although I would love to see the Gorosei at Egghead, I almost feel like they would be too overpowered to handle, especially since Luffy has yet to even harm Saturn. The Gorosei coming here would be a doomsday event, and I don't see any way the Straw Hats escape here, especially if they are truly the in-game villains Oda makes them out to be. So does it make sense for Oda to write them all into the story as threats we must defeat at Egghead to escape? I don't think so. I could be wrong, but the Gorosei actually showing up here doesn't make any sense narratively, which is why I believe the summoning will be interrupted. But how? Well, as I mentioned before, we see massive amounts of flame around the summoning circle, so fire may be an important part of the ritual. So what if they can be countered with another alchemical fire, by Sanji's alchemical fire? Perhaps this is the reason why Oda has always made Sanji a focus when Saturn uses his abilities. Sanji especially was able to see the process of Saturn summoning himself through the circle in chapter 1094. So what if Oda ended the chapter with Sanji's reaction to foreshadow that he would try to prevent the summoning from occurring? Imagine Sanji running at top speed and breaking the circles using Ifri Jambe based on his instinctual alchemy. If this happens, this would confirm that Sanji is the secret weapon to countering the Gorosei's alchemy. No wonder Luffy told Sanji that he cannot be the Pirate King without him. He's just special. Him smoke Sanji, the master of alchemy. That's the theory guys, I hope I was able to convince you that this whole time Diable Jambe was Sanji's own special science, alchemy. As Oda says, let's continue to watch Sanji in the future, because I really do believe he will be of amazing use against Saturn or against the Gorosei. Thank you for watching guys, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this theory. And if you love Sanji theories, make sure to watch my theory on how Sanji is a conqueror. See you there, middle way out.